mirror, mirror on the wall. Are my teaching practices worth sharing with all, or at all? The students seem interested, but lately have become a little bored with my dozen or so go-to lessons. I wish I could get some direct feedback on the performance of my lessons from my colleagues. The only feedback I've ever received was from administrators. I imagine other teachers at school have something to offer when it comes to developing and reflecting on effective teaching practices. I'll ask. Hi, Cindy. How are you? I was wondering if you could do me a favor. Hi, Frank. Sure. What is it? Well, uh, would you mind observing me sometime? I would really like your opinion. Uh, um, why? Don't you think you're doing a good job? Well, yes, but I think there's room to do a better job. There always is... I don't know. I think it would make the students uncomfortable. Besides, there isn't any time. Isn't it the job of an administrator to give you feedback? Wouldn't we need permission? Why me? Because I trust and value your professional opinion. You're my colleague, and an administrator isn't. We can try to find the time. I'm sure students would be okay if they were given advance notice and legitimate reasons. I don't see how this would make them uncomfortable. Sorry, Frank, I can't do this. It's too much work, and I don't see how this is in any way beneficial to you or me. I don't understand why I can't get anyone to observe me and offer opinions on my teaching practices. Because ongoing peer observation and feedback are not part of a culture of teacher collaboration yet. Culture of teacher collaboration? Ongoing? Yes. Have you ever been observed by one of your peers, or have you ever observed one of your colleagues? No, neither. Throughout my career, I've only been observed by administrators, not teachers. Then Cindy's reaction shouldn't come as a surprise. Peer observation and feedback, either live, video, or other means, is an unfamiliar and foreign concept to many. It tends to threaten teachers' comfort zone. Yet, my training and research clearly identify ongoing peer feedback as one of the best ways to enhance and encourage best teaching practices. This is exactly what I want from my colleagues, their opinions on my teaching practices. Opinions are just a start. Informed, objective opinions based on agreed and mutually understood criteria is best for peer feedback. Criteria for feedback? Sure. Something that attempts to gauge the effectiveness of your teaching and students' learning. Things like voice projection, classroom position, classroom management, clarity of instructions, the staging and sequencing of a lesson, feedback, reinvestment tasks, minimizing teacher talking time, use of available technologies, the list can go on and on. That seems like a lot of criteria. I wouldn't know where to start. You could start with the cough. The cough? Yes, the cough. A constructive observation feedback form. Oh, I see. A form with set criteria. Not exactly set criteria. The COF provides you and your colleagues a general template from which to formulate the criteria together. It really is up to you and your peers to design the criteria in a way that is mutually understood and beneficial. Starting this kind of dialogue really opens up the vastness that is dynamic teaching and learning strategies and techniques. Okay, how do I get this dialogue going? You already have. Would you mind coming into my classroom sometime? I'd love to. Let's have a look at that cough.